In this video, we're going to add a very, very simple checkpoint system. So we're going to insert a new object. I'm going to scroll down to Sprite, and we're going to create a checkpoint. So create a checkpoint, insert, and we're going to create something that looks like a checkpoint. So I'm going to go for the classic Super Mario flag, just like so. So that will do for mine. Remember to crop just to get rid of those other edges. We've got the flag in there. So we've got that now. And what I want to do is, I think this would be best to add onto our background because our background is going to be around the whole time. But our player is going to get destroyed. So we get some issues with variables. So let's add this to our background. It's going to add an instance variable and we're going to call it checkpoint. And this is going to be a number and the number is going to start at zero. So that's where we start off with. So let's go to our event sheet now. So we're going to add a new event. I'm going to check if our player has touched the checkpoint. So if the player has overlapped the checkpoint, what do we want to do? Well, we want to take our variable that we had before, set on our background, and we want to set the value to 1. So we've set the checkpoint now to 1. So now what we need to do is we need to change this variable here. So we're going to take this whole argument, we're going to bring it down the way. And we're also going to copy it and paste it because we're going to use it for something else. So on destroyed, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a new condition. And we're going to say, if the background compare instant variable checkpoint is equal to zero if the player dies restart the layout so this is checking for both these conditions to be true so if the player dies checkpoint equals zero restart the layout now if the checkpoint equals one we want to start at the next checkpoint so add another condition background compare instance variable checkpoint equal to one so we can get rid of this restart layout because we don't need to use that anymore but we'll explain something that goes along with this in just a second so on destroyed and if checkpoint equals one we're going to go to our checkpoint and we're just going to get it to spawn a new object so spawn another object what's it going to spawn we want it to spawn our player so we're not restarting our layout so this has a both positive and negative aspect because we don't restart our layout, everything that the player's done does not restart. So if they killed some enemies and died, those enemies would still be disappearing. So if they killed all enemies and they died at the boss, they could run straight back to the boss and not have to kill those enemies again. If you wanted that challenge where they've got to complete that whole section without dying, then you'll need to restart layout. But if you restart layout, it also restarts some code. So it is a bit more of a challenging problem than it first appears. But let's test this code. So what we're going to do first is let's just die. So we know we go back to the start. We're going to touch the checkpoint. We're now going to fall off and we've restarted. So that if we wanted some more checkpoints in this level, this is a really difficult level. We want some extra checkpoints. How do we go about that? Well, all we need to do is copy or clone this checkpoint to create checkpoint number two. We're going to add that in a later part of the level. We're then going to go to our event sheet. We can then copy and paste this command. And we can say that if we're overlapping checkpoint, oh, let's move this out so it's in its own place. So just click that at the side instead. So we'll copy that or we'll paste it below. So now if it's overlapping checkpoint two, we set the value of this to two, and then we copy this statement once again. But if the play is destroyed and the value is equal to two, then we can set and respawn them at checkpoint two instead. So a couple of little steps that you have to go through to get checkpoints to work. But once it's set up, it's quite an easy copy and paste job. So just another quick test. 
if we go to checkpoint one and we die, we spawn at checkpoint one. If we go to checkpoint two and we die, we spawn at checkpoint two. And you might be wondering what happens if we go straight to checkpoint two. So let's see if we can jump over checkpoint one, not quite. So instead, let's just quickly spawn that side of checkpoint one. The value is still going to equal two, so we'll still respawn at the second checkpoint. 